Brianna Maitland completed her shift at a local hotel on March 19, 2004, and began her journey home for the night. It was a routine she'd performed countless times before, a familiar rhythm to the ebb and flow of life in Sheldon, Vermont. But little did she know that this night would be different, and the path she tread upon would veer off course into the realm of the unknown. The following morning, a ski team visiting the snow-capped mountains of Vermont was traveling down Route 118 when they spotted something that sparked their curiosity. So much so that they pulled the side of the road and photographed an Oldsmobile Delta that had been backed up suspiciously into a barn. They poked around momentarily, looking to offer assistance, but no one was around. They loaded back into their vehicle and drove off, not knowing that their photos would be the only remaining images of a crime scene where Brianna Maitland vanished without a trace. Brianna Maitland was born October 8, 1986, to parents Kelly and Bruce Maitland of Franklin, Vermont, a remote town just before the West Berkshire border, crossing over into Canada. It's a small town of just over 1,000 residents. Nestled in the heart of Vermont's picturesque landscape, Franklin exudes an aura of tranquility, its rolling hills blanketed in lush greenery that stretches as far as the eye can see. This quaint rural town with its scattered clusters of weathered barns and farmhouses seems frozen in time, a relic of simpler days gone by. But beneath its serene facade lies a community grappling with a haunting mystery that has lingered for years. Franklin is not just a dot on the map, it's a place marked by the enigmatic disappearance of Brianna Maitland, a young woman whose vanishing continues to cast a long shadow over the town. Brianna grew up on her family's farmland with an older brother. As a child, she trained in jujitsu, and friends say that she was no pushover. Her upbringing made her fiercely independent. Her friends and family describe her as being a kind and a good friend. She was never afraid to stand up for what she thought was right. Her father, Bruce, says Brianna had a strong sense of justice. As she got older, Brianna spent most of her time with friends and had a vibrant social life. But because of the remoteness of her family's farm, most of her friends lived several miles away in a neighboring town. Her father reports that Brianna didn't fit in with the kids at her small town high school. So during her sophomore year, against her parents' wishes, she moved out of her home and started couch surfing and attended school with her close friends in Sheldon, Vermont. Brianna was seeking a fresh start. In this close-knit community of Sheldon, where everyone knows everyone, she found a sense of belonging that eluded her elsewhere. By March of 2004, Brianna had completed her GED, found a job to support herself, and moved in with her lifelong friend, Jillian Stout. She was looking forward to the extra money that a second job would bring in, and was due to start in just a few days. But after leaving work as a dishwasher at the Black Lantern Inn at around 11.30 p.m. on March 19th, Brianna disappeared. In the months leading up to her disappearance, Brianna was a vibrant presence in the town of Sheldon. Tall and slim with long flowing brown hair and a radiant smile, Brianna possessed a natural beauty that captivated those around her. Outside of work, Brianna was known to enjoy spending time with friends, attending local events, and exploring the surrounding countryside. But there were also reports of occasional conflicts and disagreements in the weeks leading up to her disappearance adding a layer of complexity to the circumstances surrounding her vanishing. Despite these challenges, Brianna remained hopeful and optimistic about the future. In small town environments, the drama between teens can spread like wildfire. As someone who was outspoken, loyal, and a little naive, not many people were shocked when Brianna was in a physical altercation with a girl named Keely LaCrosse, or Kelly, weeks before her disappearance. I'm not 100% certain on the pronunciation of the girl's name. Although she trained in martial arts, Brianna chose not to fight back against someone that she once considered a friend. While there's been copious speculation about the reason for the fight, Bruce maintains that it was all because of jealousy. Photos taken after the fight show Brianna with two black eyes, even though she supposedly never even raised a hand towards the other girl. While receiving medical care, doctors determined that she also suffered from a broken nose and a concussion. After Brianna was urged by her friends and family, she went on to file charges with the police. The case against Keeley was to be heard by a judge on April 9, 2004, but Brianna would be missing by that time. Without her appearance in court, the case was dropped. 
On the morning of Friday, March 19th, Brianna took and passed her GED test. To celebrate, Brianna and her mother Kelly went out for lunch and to go shopping. Kelly is quoted in the Trace Evidence podcast as saying, quote, it was an upbeat day. Despite the celebratory nature, though, Kelly reports that while they were standing in line to buy some items, Brianna was staring out one of the windows into the parking lot and stated out of nowhere that she'd be right back, leaving her mother standing alone in line. After checking out, Kelly exits the store, heading for the parking lot where Brianna meets up with her. Kelly reports that at this point, Brianna seemed agitated. Kelly didn't want to push her daughter on the matter, so she accepted the answer that she just needed to get ready for work. Those close to Brianna have since come forward, stating that she was confronted in the parking lot and was urged not to go to work that night. People following the case have made some wild assumptions about this warning, coming up with all sorts of theories about what may or may not have happened that day. But with the looming court date, the reason for this confrontation seems obvious. Despite her daughter's abrupt change in attitude, Kelly dropped Brianna off at the apartment that she shared with Jillian without pressing the matter. This was the last time she saw her daughter. Before going to work on that frigid evening, Brianna left a note for Jillian that she would be back later after work. But Brianna would never return. It's stories like this that remind us that danger can pop up when you least expect it. And when you're injured, your injury could be worth millions. Insurance companies often love to lowball claims, but if you become a client of Morgan & Morgan, they'll help you fight to get what you deserve. All law firms are not the same. Morgan & Morgan is as popular as they are for a reason. They've won a lot. If you're ever injured, whether in an accident or otherwise, you should know that you have rights. And Morgan & Morgan will fight for their clients to protect those rights and get them the compensation they deserve. Just in the last few months, Morgan & Morgan has won a $12 million case in Florida, a $26 million case in Philadelphia, and a $6.8 million case in New York, all of which were dozens of times higher than the insurance offer. The best thing about Morgan & Morgan is that their fee is absolutely free unless you win the case. And there's a good reason why over 3 million people each year trust Morgan & Morgan and call them in their time of need. If you've ever been injured, it's super easy to start a claim with America's largest injury law firm in just a few clicks. You can start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan at forthepeople.com slash true crime stories, or click the link in the description. That's forthepeople.com slash true crime stories. Thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. The Black Lantern Inn was busy when Brianna arrived that evening. During the winter months in Vermont, the red-bricked bed and breakfast is expected to have no vacancies due to its proximity to Jay Peak, a popular seasonal sports destination. The Black Lantern Inn stands as a timeless beacon of hospitality amidst the rolling hills and serene countryside of Sheldon, Vermont. Nestled at the heart of the town's historic district, this charming establishment exudes an air of warmth and welcome that draws travelers and locals alike into its embrace. Behind the scenes, Brianna found her place within the bustling rhythm of the Black Lantern Inn, her bright smile and easy charm making her a beloved fixture among staff and patrons alike. Brianna's genuine warmth and hospitality left an amazing impression on all who crossed her path. When questioned after her disappearance, none of her coworkers indicated anything unusual happened that night. Brianna, a dishwasher, spent most of her shift in the kitchen. At 11.20 p.m., Brianna clocked out of work. Her coworkers invited her to have some food with them, but she declined, stating she just wanted to go home. Coworkers see Brianna walk out to her car, where she gets in and drives down the road towards her apartment. Drivers traveling along Route 105 between the inn and Brianna's apartment would later tell investigators that they'd gone past the barn where her vehicle was later recovered and had seen her Oldsmobile backed in with the taillights illuminating the pitch black night. If these motorists are reliable witnesses, this detail means that there is a 10 minute window for things to go tragically wrong as these reports came in around 11.30 p.m. The details of what transpired in the hours that followed remain shrouded in mystery obscured by the passage of time and the unreliable impulses of memory. What is known is this. Brianna was last seen leaving the Black Lantern Inn in her car, a 1985 Oldsmobile sedan, sometime after 11.20 p.m. It was a sighting that would later become the focal point of the investigation into her disappearance, a breadcrumb trail leading to the darkness that swallowed her whole. 
The following morning, police stumbled across Brianna's car, abandoned and backed into the side of a dilapidated farmhouse on East Berkshire Road, just a short distance from the Black Lantern Inn. Mind you, at this point, police had no reason to suspect that Brianna had vanished, so they were a bit confused not only by the state of her car, but also its location. Its windshield was shattered, and its rear end was lodged firmly against the side of the building. It stood as a silent lookout to the mystery that had unfolded in the dead of night that evening. But most intriguing of all about this discovery was that Brianna was nowhere to be seen. Tuesday, March 23rd, four days after her shift at the Black Lantern Inn, Jillian calls Kelly to ask if Brianna is there. Kelly, surprised by this question, tells Jillian that the last time she saw Brianna was on Friday, after she dropped her off at the apartment where the girls lived together. Jillian says that she received a note from Brianna on Friday, but left for the weekend, and when she returned, everything was just as she left it. As far as she could tell, Brianna had never come home. After not hearing from Brianna for several days, that's when Jillian decided to call Kelly. This means Brianna was missing for four days before anyone began to look for her. Rattled by this phone call, Kelly calls around looking for her daughter. Each call ends the same way. The person on the other line tells Kelly they haven't seen or talked to Brianna in several days. Kelly's worry increases with every phone call, and after she hangs up the phone for the final time, she decides she needs to report her daughter as missing. Shortly after, she drives to the Vermont State Police headquarters with her husband to provide them with the details of her missing daughter. While at the police station in St. Albans, they tell the police that Brianna drives an older model green Oldsmobile. Interesting, the police think. They then show Kelly and Bruce a photo of a vehicle they towed away only a few days prior, after they found it crashed into the side of an abandoned farmhouse. This interaction with the police made two things evident to Bruce and Kelly. Their daughter crashed her car and had been missing much longer than they initially believed. But worse yet, the police had failed to notify them about the car. Meaning, in the eyes of some people, the police could be, to an extent, at fault for the delay in Brianna being reported missing. Police told Bruce and Kelly that they responded to the scene after several drivers called in to report the vehicle abandoned on the side of the road. But what's really interesting about this case is just how Brianna seemingly vanished without leaving a single shred of evidence behind, but also the similarities that this case has to another incredibly popular disappearance, Mara Murray. I'm curious how it's possible that with Mara Murray disappearing just 60 miles away, just a few weeks later, no alarms went off. By now, I'm sure most of us have heard of Mara Murray's disappearance. Her case has become one of the most recognizable true crime cases in recent history. She too vanished without a trace and left investigators with very few leads. To this day, she's still never been found. Many people have been asking one question. Is it possible that her case remains unsolved due to small town negligence? Another bizarre link between the case was the presence of what many consider a red herring a clue that's distracting or misleading. In Mara's case, a red rag was found inside her tailpipe and it was never really explained. Who put it there and why? In Brianna's case, a single lime wedge stuck to the trunk of her car was recovered at the scene. Investigators initially shrugged off this lime, but many have since asked who put it there and more importantly, why? Another similarity to Mara's case was the vicinity of a local snow resort local community's primary source of revenue. Is it possible these cases were initially classified as runaways to prevent disturbing the local tourism industry? Or simply that a small rural police force is largely incapable of handling such a sinister crime? On March 20th, 2004, at 1 p.m., a deputy was sent to the scene of Brianna's abandoned car. Upon arrival, this deputy assumed the car was abandoned after a drunk driving accident. The vehicle was found unlocked with the keys missing. The responding officer located two unopened paychecks addressed to Brianna Maitland from the Black Lantern Inn, only a mile down the road, and went there to see if they could locate her. When he arrived, the inn was closed. Because he needed to respond to another call, the deputy ultimately decided to have Brianna's car towed to a local lot. He maintains he had no reason to believe it was a crime scene. While Vermont, this area in particular, has a comparatively low crime rate, especially concerning violent crime, 
I have difficulty believing that a low crime rate deters police from receiving proper training. I also wonder in what world is a car towed without first contacting the registered owner, especially in the event of a supposed crash. This just seems a bit backward to me. Following the missing person report, filed by Brianna's parents, police searched around the Dutchburn barn with canines but found no substantial evidence. Like Mara's case, many close to Brianna felt that the unsolved status stems from negligence and simple lazy police work. Police took no pictures at either scene. The responding officers ran neither plate to establish contact with the registered owner. Despite both cars having wrecked at night in freezing temperatures, there was seemingly no concern for the driver of either vehicle. After towing each car away from the scene, law enforcement waited a substantial amount of time before contacting the family. As we all know, making assumptions in law enforcement can be a tragic mistake. While there are several similarities between the disappearances of Brianna and Mara, Locals, Brianna's family included, don't believe they're related. That's because they believe they know who did it. Speculation surrounding Brianna's disappearance has spanned a wide range of theories, each attempting to unravel the mystery of what happened to her on that fateful night in March of 2004. One prevailing theory suggests that Brianna may have met with foul play, perhaps falling victim to an unknown assailant or encountering someone with malicious intent along her journey home back from the Black Lantern Inn. This theory is supported by the mysterious circumstances surrounding the discovery of Brianna's abandoned car, its windshield shattered and its rear end wedged against the side of an abandoned farmhouse, suggesting a possible struggle or altercation. Another theory claims that Brianna may have voluntarily left her life behind choosing to embark on a new path without informing her loved ones of her intentions. Believers of this theory point to Brianna's reported desire to leave Sheldon and start anew, as well as her purported involvement in those altercations in the weeks leading up to her disappearance. But this theory is largely speculative and lacks concrete evidence to support its claims. In fact, as far as we know, Brianna loved it in Sheldon. She also had a new job lined up that she was expected to start in just a few days. So this theory doesn't make much sense to me personally. Additionally, some have theorized that Brianna's disappearance may be connected to the drug trade, citing rumors of drug activity in the area and Brianna's alleged involvement with individuals known to be involved in illicit activities. While there's no direct evidence linking Brianna's disappearance to drug-related issues, the presence of these rumors has fueled speculation and added complexity to the investigation. Now, there have been suggestions that Brianna's disappearance may be linked to other unsolved cases in the region, such as Mara's, leading to speculation about potential connections between her vanishing and other missing persons or criminal activities. But without tangible evidence to substantiate these claims, they remain mere speculation and have not yielded any significant breakthroughs in the investigation. As investigators continue to sift through leads and explore new avenues of inquiry, the search for answers remains ongoing with the hope that one day, the truth of what happened to Brianna will finally come to light. Until then, speculation serves as both a driving force and a reminder of the unsolved questions that linger in the hearts and minds of those touched by this tragic case. But all hope isn't lost. Greg Overecker, a private investigator deeply invested in this case, stated in a 2017 podcast interview from Crawl Space Media, he says he believes he knows where she is, but because it's on property that he quote, can't get on, her body remains undiscovered. This property belongs to one of four local men suspected to be involved with the case. Katie, a close friend of Brianna's, also spoke with the podcast and regarded Brianna's case as incredibly solvable. She maintains that three or four men are involved and that just one of them needs to be the one to talk, which leads to one question. Who will it be and what kind of deal will they get? In March of 2016, investigators revealed that they'd recovered DNA inside Brianna's car that they believe belongs to their primary suspect. On March 18th of 2022, Vermont State Police announced that a lab in Texas ran tests on forensic samples sent to them in the fall of 2020. They examined these samples using advanced DNA sequencing to identify a match to an individual on law enforcement's radar. Scientists used genome sequencing to build a DNA profile. This method is similar to one used to create the profile that led to convicting Joseph D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer. This means Vermont State Police have a match for one of their people of interest. 
The only problem is, police have yet to name a suspect in their investigation, leading to the continued question of who this unnamed person of interest is and why, with a DNA match, this person hasn't become their primary suspect. While Detective Angela Baker of the Vermont State Police maintains that this evidence, quote, doesn't mean they have identified a subject, to those following the case, it means they are close. Due to the active status of the investigation, officials won't release many solid pieces of evidence to the public. Doing so would jeopardize the integrity of the investigation. I suspect that with a DNA match in hand, law enforcement is working to solidify their case, and they're probably inching closer each and every day. One significant development in the case occurred with the emergence of new leads and potential evidence. Advances in forensic technology have enabled investigators to re-examine existing evidence and explore previously unexplored avenues of inquiry. Additionally, the widespread use of social media and online platforms has facilitated communication and collaboration among law enforcement agencies, independent researchers, and the public, leading to the sharing of information and the generation of new leads. In recent years, there have been sporadic reports of potential sightings of Brianna, or individuals matching her description, prompting renewed hope among her family and supporters. While many of these sightings have ultimately been proven to be unsubstantiated, each new lead is thoroughly investigated in the hopes of uncovering valuable information that could lead to a breakthrough in the case. What happened to Brianna Maitland on that fateful night remains a question that haunts the collective conscience of Sheldon and beyond. Law enforcement agencies launched a comprehensive investigation into her disappearance, scouring the surrounding area for any sign of her whereabouts. Yet, despite their best efforts, no trace of Brianna has ever been found. But amidst the uncertainty and anguish, one thing remains abundantly clear. Brianna Maitland will never be forgotten. Her legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of those who knew her, her memory kept alive by the undying hope that one day, the truth of her disappearance will come to light. Until then, she remains a symbol of the enduring mystery that lies at the heart of the human experience, a reminder that sometimes the answers we seek are simply beyond our grasp. As the sun sets over the rolling hills of Sheldon, casting long shadows across the landscape, the mystery of Brianna Maitland's disappearance endures, a silent testament to the fragility of life, but the resilience of the human spirit. And though she may have vanished into the night, her light continues to shine as a beacon of hope in the darkness that surrounds us all. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other interesting case I covered, and don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future videos. You can also click that join button below to support the channel and see new videos long before everyone else does. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.